Street Fighter 6 is just on the horizon, ready to usher in a new generation for this legendary franchise. And this might be the most excited I've been for a new Street Fighter in my entire life. It's visually gorgeous, the single player content seems massive, and I can tell you from the betas that they've already done that the gameplay is amazing. I've already gotten addicted to the combat of this game and it hasn't even come out yet. But one of the biggest positives for me is the roster. Sure, I have a problem that over half the cast all comes from Street Fighter 2. Seriously, Capcom, you have a problem and you need to move past that game eventually. But when it comes to the new characters, this might be the best collection of new fighters I've ever seen in a Street Fighter. Yeah, when it comes to new characters in Street Fighter, they can range pretty broadly from new icons to oddballs who might grow on you over time to let's all agree not to talk about them again. But for Street Fighter 6, Granted, there's still a lot of information that we don't know about these characters yet. We haven't seen how they'll play out in the arcade endings or in the story mode or however else this game plans on giving us information on these characters. But as of right now, Jamie, Kimberly, Manon, Marissa, JP, Lily, they all look great and are winning over fans left and right. But as I said, Street Fighter isn't always this lucky with their new characters. They tend to range pretty wildly in each new game. But if the fighters who make it into the games are this wild, how crazy are the ones that got cut? I always love looking at concept art for a game. I love seeing how a character has evolved and thinking about how they could have been different. But I also love seeing the characters that could have been in the game but were cut for one reason or another. And as you can imagine, Street Fighter, a game that is very dependent on having memorable characters with unique backgrounds and personalities and movesets, has a lot of far out there characters who never saw the light of day. So today, in honor of Street Fighter VI coming out, I want to do a quick rundown of the history of some of the most unique cut characters from this series, and in some cases, characters who weren't cut but changed so much over time that they're practically completely different fighters from who we could have originally gotten. So let's go ahead and start where this series all began, Street Fighter II. Okay, I know that's a joke to say that there was no Street Fighter 1 and not to bring the game up when you're talking about this series other than just to say, look at how bad this game was. But for our purposes today, yeah, we're going to skip the original Street Fighter because there's very little info on cut characters from that game. Probably because the cast of that game was so basic that anyone cut wasn't worth talking about. This is a game that includes such fighters as Ninja, and Old Man, and Other Old Man. I doubt there was a killer breakout star just crumpled up in the trash somewhere at Capcom headquarters back then. Street Fighter 2, on the other hand, is when this series started giving us characters with far more personality. We went from random shirtless guy Joe to heroic man-beast Blanca. But this iconic starring roster wasn't the original cast of Street Fighter 2. No, from the very start, this game always planned on having eight fighters, but they were completely different characters than the eight fighters we eventually got. Not even Ryu, the protagonist of the first game, was going to return. Instead, your starring roster was going to consist of Masaki Kaku, a serious man who was picked on in school for having a frightening scowl and used an ancient attack known as the Japanese Spirit Strike. Ji Li, who could attack with her hair and was going to be the daughter of Gin from the first game. Bun Bobo, a mysterious man who attacked with his feet. Tahir Mayor, a masked wrestler the developers described as having a, quote, strong style. He was obviously going to be the game's grappler. Shulk Muller, a Green Beret with an IQ of 220. The developers said that he could use his intelligence in order to predict his opponent's moves. Although, I think that's just flavor text. I don't exactly know if you could give a character that ability in 1990. He's described as a fast killing machine, meaning he was probably going to be a rushdown character. Great Tiger, who could breathe fire and was going to be able to double jump. And a Bebe, who is easily the most poorly aged character in this roster. He's described as a quote, beast man who was raised by lions and is kept in chains by his fight manager. Let's move on. And lastly, the greatest name of any character in the history of Street Fighter, Dick Jumpsy. Yes, you heard correct, Dick Jumpsy, everyone. I just want you all to imagine for a second what would have been like if this guy hadn't been cut. That means that in some alternate timeline, there's somebody watching the trailers come out for Street Fighter VI who is actually saying out loud, man, I hope my main Dick Jumpsy gets in. I need Dick Jumpsy in this game. I'm not buying Street Fighter VI until Dick Jumpsy gets in. But beyond his name, Dick Jumpsy is also worth knowing because he was a movie star who was going to use this tournament to promote his upcoming film. That's right, Street Fighter almost invented Johnny Cage a year before Mortal Kombat. And you want to know the crazy thing? The reason none of these characters made it into the game 
is because Capcom had to scrap all of their original plans for Street Fighter 2 because of one single man. A man so powerful that no one at Capcom could stop him. A man who crushed anyone who dared oppose him, leaving all of his competition in ashes. <laughs> Yep, because everyone was buying Nintendos, there was a shortage in the chips that Capcom needed to make Street Fighter 2. So they threw out all of these characters and then tried again a few years later. And taking a look at this roster and thinking about how they were originally going to be the starting lineup for Street Fighter 2, I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you Mario, you may actually have saved this entire franchise. So none of these characters made into the game, but you can see how many of them would evolve into the cast that we came to know. Ji Lee obviously became Chun Li, trained in her hair attacks for kicks, and now instead of being the daughter of Gin, she's now the student of Gin. Bun Bobo, with his strong kicks and serious expression, might have evolved into Guile. Tahir, being a strong wrestler, might have been the inspiration for Zangief. Anabebe, being a beast man raised by animals, clearly turned into Blanca. And Great Tiger, with his fire breath, was obviously the early inspiration for Dalsim. Although I do have to wonder if they changed the name when they realized that there was already a Nintendo character with that exact same name. I also wonder if Schulte Muller, being a bloodthirsty killer, might have been an early version of Vega? Because if you look at the early designs of Vega, he went through numerous changes throughout his history. He did keep his mask for almost every version, but the developers have said that they did change him greatly, having at one point been a ninja and at another point been a bullfighter. Which brings us to the wildest cut character in this roster. Yes, those were all the name characters that were cut, but many characters stopped at the initial design. We had a police officer, a masked tiger-themed wrestler, a character simply described as a jungle king, a kinpo fighter taking heavy inspiration from Fist of the North Star, and then this character. All we know about this character is that he was going to be a bullfighter. Not sure why exactly he's rocking Kiss Army makeup, but I don't really follow the world of bullfighting enough, so I can't really comment on. You'll also notice that he's holding a rope, but that wasn't going to be his weapon of choice. Instead, this game was originally planned to let you pick up weapons on the field and use them to fight your opponent, taking inspiration from the beat-em-up games of the time like Final Fight. Now, as I said, there have been many comments about Vega's original designs being a bullfighter, so maybe this character was an early inspiration for this legendary assassin? But that's not what's really important about this character. No, what's important is that this might be the most well-known cut character in video game history because he's one of the only characters to be cut from a game and then wind up in multiple other games, none of which were owned by Capcom. In 2011, these early concept sketches found their way into the hands of one Wooly Madden, at the time a member of the Super Best Friends YouTube channel and now of the Wooly vs. channel. He saw this design and thought it was incredible, maybe for genuine reasons, maybe for comedic reasons, maybe for a mix of both, but he thought it was pure fire. So he put out a video in his series, Fighterpedia, where he talked about this character as though he was a god and this legendary figure, a man without a game dubbing him Zubaz based on the words written on the character's shirt. The joke of Zubaz, or just the Baz for short, kept growing from one video to another until it stopped being a joke and instead turned into a legend, building up a massive lore behind him and basically becoming the unofficial mascot of these super best friends. Well, two years later in 2013, a rather quirky indie fighter called Dive Kick was released, a game where you could do two things, jump and kick, and that's it. So in other words, all you could do was just dive kick. But the Super Best Friends donated enough money to the game's Kickstarter to get a character into the game, and they of course submitted Zubaz, finally putting this character into a game, and it didn't stop there. The Baz has gone on to appear in games such as Pedal Crash, Slipstream, he's a boss fight in Indivisible, and biggest of all, he has appeared in multiple Shovel Knight games. So yes, this character was dropped by Capcom and was then picked up by some fighting game fans and has now become a legend in the indie video game scene as a wandering mysterious figure who has no game of his own, but will appear everywhere and anywhere. What genre is your game? A fighter? Sure, he's there. A puzzle game? Why not? RPG, drive 
driving game, there's no limit. But here's the thing that I find the most interesting about this story. As I said, Zubaz got his name from the word written on his shirt in this early concept art. Well, that concept art reappeared in the 30th anniversary Street Fighter collection, cleaned up to make it crisp and clear. But do you notice something now missing from this sketch? The Zubaz on his shirt is now gone. Which means one of two things happen. One, this scan comes from another sketch that just happens to look exactly like the other drawing except for the name on the shirt. Or two, when the people putting this collection together got this design from Capcom, they knew about the legend of the Baz. And they said, oh no, we can't put that in there. His shirt literally says the name of the character that was made from him. We have to hide this in some way. So when they touched it up to make it look good for this collection, they removed the word from his chest to try and distance him from the Baz. Meaning that the fan character, who was changed slightly to be legally distinct from the concept sketch, now circled back around and the concept sketch had to be changed to be legally distinct from the fan character. I don't know, and let's be honest, we'll never know the answer to that question because I can almost guarantee you that nobody at Capcom will ever answer any questions about this, and considering that Capcom wasn't the ones who put the 30th anniversary collection together, probably have no idea who the Baz even is, but I'd like to think it was that second story. So that was a glimpse of some of the more unique cut characters from Street Fighter 2, but things were about to ramp up in a few years with the release of... Street Fighter Alpha. Not that one. That one. Yeah, sorry, but we're also going to be skipping the alpha games for this video. Not because I don't like them, far from it. They might actually be my favorite in the Street Fighter series, but in researching this video, I was shocked that it had easily the least number of cut characters or changed character designs, at least out of all the sketches that have been revealed. I'm sure in some vault at Capcom, there's some crazy fighter that was deemed too powerful for late 90s audiences to handle, but out of all the concept art that's been made available, all the cut characters are nothing to write home about, and all of the new characters were pretty firmly established from their early designs, so yeah, there's nothing really worth talking about from that game. So we're going to skip right past the alpha games and go into Street Fighter 3. Now, when it comes to the cast of Street Fighter 3, the developers essentially created two sides. There's the younger, cooler side, the side that played into the game's hip-hop tone and brought fresh new attitude to the series. Then the other half of the roster is completely off-the-wall weirdos that make even Blanca look normal. And I'm letting you know right now, these cut characters almost all come from that second camp. Yeah, when you first look at these characters, you might doubt they were possible candidates for Street Fighter 3, but I'd just like to remind you that Necro and 12 exist. Think about that and suddenly some of these concept sketches start to slide into place. All right, taking a glance at what we have here, we can see some early concept sketches for Alex, looking a lot more like Cody from Final Fight. And then we have an early design for Gil, revealing that yes, he somehow could have been even more naked. But then when we zoom out, we see a freaking Velociraptor. Yes, at one point, they pitched a Velociraptor to be in Street Fighter 3. And what's really wild to me is that Street Fighter 3 came out in 1997. Tekken introduced its own Velociraptor fighter in Tekken 2, which came out in 1995. That is easily far enough apart to be suspect. I mean, don't get me wrong, this was the 90s and thanks to Jurassic Park, raptors and dinosaurs were everywhere, so I'm not saying that they necessarily ripped Tekken off. I'm just saying that if one of your chief competitors two years before you puts out the exact character that you make for your game, wouldn't somebody bring that up? I mean, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. I don't think Street Fighter was actually trying to rip off Alex from Tekken when they were designing... Wait. The Velociraptor in Tekken is called Alex. And the protagonist of Street Fighter 3 was called... Alex. And they tried to put a Velociraptor in Street Fighter 3. Guys, I think Street Fighter tried to rip off Tekken. Well, uh, okay. Full disclosure, I'm not entirely sure if this Cretaceous combatant was supposed to be a playable character, because there's plenty of other fighters that we see in these concept sketches that seem kinda generic. There's a doctor simply called Doctor, and a ninja simply called Ninja. These might have been suggested background characters. I mean, Necro stage in the very first Street Fighter 3, it's a traveling mad science lab. I could totally see a resurrected dinosaur just being there in the background. But then you get into the more specific and somehow even weirder characters. 
a rollerblading techno fighter, a poison using assassin who might have somehow gone on to inspire Fong in Street Fighter V, then there's this giant of a man with some gin themes in his design, and my personal favorite, this angry furry gremlin simply called Martin. How is Alex supposed to get this guy in a headlock? He's like 50% mouth. By the way, if the name Martin sounds like an odd choice for a grizzly monster like this, that's because it was actually inspired by a creature from the manga, Bao, which was created by Hirohiko Araki, the same creator of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Street Fighter is actually known for taking design inspiration from JoJo characters, so it would make sense that eventually they'd be influenced by a character based on one of his other series. And by influenced, I meant completely stole. Yeah, not only does it share the same name as a monster in Bao, this is what that monster looks like. Wow! Now it's not even up for debate. You could show these two images to 10 people and 11 of them would say they ripped the manga off. Now let's continue into some characters who have a little bit more detail behind them. There's a judo master who, according to the notes, has a hot wife. That's it. That's all the info on him. His wife is a looker. That's actually what it says. Then there's a capoeira master who fights entirely upside down and a giant robot simply called Marionette Master. That's all we know about him, but that name raises so many questions about how they'd fight. But I know what you're thinking. These look like just the most basic sketches, the earliest of early designs. Clearly some of these characters were never meant to be in the game. Heck, some of them might even have been joke characters that they just wrote down and never planned on putting in at all. You know what? You got a point. Since these were clearly super early sketches, they probably weren't ever seriously considered for the game. For those characters, we'd turn to this early arcade flyer for Street Fighter 3. Yes, when Capcom's newest, most highly anticipated fighting game was about to hit stands, they decided to promote it by sending arcades these flyers that showed off who wasn't in the game. That certainly seems like a bold strategy, but hey, this was Capcom in the late 90s. Nothing could possibly harm them. These were fully drawn out characters who came much closer to actually making it into the game, and a couple of concept sketches for some existing characters. For example, Necro originally looked much more like a stretchy version of Vision, and Ibuki is practically unrecognizable. And while we're talking about existing characters, let's also look at a few early concept sketches from Makoto, who is vastly different from the dedicated traditional martial artist that we eventually came to know. But as for the new characters, you've got this giant hairy beast from France, who despite his looks is actually a noble aristocrat, as made clear from his armor, and at one point, he was even going to be the original boss of the game. Then you've got another character listed as an assassin. Man, they really wanted to put an assassin in this game, didn't they? Then you've got a wrestler over here who is listed as a stone warrior. He's got a look that resembles a classic golem design. Then this character who looks like if Terry Bogart got a day job in computer tech support. The description lists him as an Abari detective. Abari meaning violent. So yeah, he's a super roided out angry detective. Maybe he's angry because his badge is hilariously oversized and barely fits on his vest. Who can say? Then you have a massive boxer in overalls, a newsy hat, and a pipe. He kind of looks to me like if Popeye and Bluto fused together. I don't hate this design, but if we were going to get a boxer in Street Fighter 3, I'm happy it was Dudley. And lastly, the one that piques my interest the most is this character simply referred to as American Girl. There is zero information on her, just that she's an American girl who looks good in clothes with American images on them. In other words, red, white, and blue stars and stripes. Now, why am I so happy about this character? Because if you've been around for a while, then you know that I love Rival Schools. It's a game that's very important to me. It was that fighting game that checked all the boxes for me when I was a kid. I love the gameplay, I love the premise, and I love the characters. And it came out about nine months after Street Fighter 3. And in that game, there is a character named Tiffany, an American girl who is one of the most popular characters in Rival Schools. She's one of the big faces of that series. And it wasn't until researching for this video that I learned she was originally going to make her video game debut in Street Fighter 3 because that is totally 100% an early version of Tiffany. If you look at the credits for a lot of the late 90s, early 2000s fighting games from Capcoms, you'll see a ton of overlap in the developers, and yes, there were multiple people who worked on Street Fighter 3 and Rival Schools. But even if there was no overlap in there, back in the 90s, Capcom employees were all working very closely with each other. So there's a very good chance that somebody's design could have slid their way into another person's game. I mean, let's actually break it down and take a look at this. She's an American girl with star boxing gloves, striped leggings, a bandana on her head, 
head. The hair is a little different and she does look a little bit older, but aside from that, that is totally an early version of Tiffany. And speaking as a massive Rival Schools fan, my mind is blown realizing that Tiffany was originally designed to be in Street Fighter 3 and I can't help but think of the what if alternate universe where that actually happened. Did she return for Street Fighter 5? Is she confirmed for Street Fighter 6? When she does her big drive impact, does it cause a huge splash of red, white, and blue? I am such a massive Rival Schools fan that just knowing that there might be a parallel reality where one of those characters got to return makes me happy. Then again, we got Akira back, so eh, you know what? We're doing okay. Moving on to Street Fighter 4, there's not a lot of concept art out there of the cut characters. However, there are a handful of new characters who had their designs changed so much during production that they might as well be cut characters. Jury is one of the best examples of this simply for the number of designs that she had. I remember when this game was coming out, I read some game magazines that said that she had over 100 different early designs. Some of the most of any fighting game character ever. Personally, I'm pretty happy with her finalized design that we did end up getting, but there are some really interesting early designs for her, but they all still have this same similar sinister vibe to her. Some of them lean into more traditional martial arts, some of them lean into more of a cybernetic high-tech side, but they all feel like they could be applied to the character that we ended up getting. Unlike our next two fighters who were completely different. Remember Abel from Street Fighter 4? The guy who they hyped up like he was going to be a major part of the game and then everyone just kind of forgot about him? He's a mountain of a man, built like a brick house of muscles in a judo outfit, so it might shock you to learn that originally he was going to look a lot like this. Yes, at one point during development, Abel was going to be a young girl, still from France and still in the judo, which has actually made a lot of people online say that the upcoming character Manon has taken some inspiration from this concept. But I don't know, aside from the fighting style and the nationality, I don't see much of a crossover. Then again, as we have seen time and time again in this video, the final version of a character can come from early designs and other inspirations from various different places and change greatly over development. And speaking of changing greatly over the development, I now present you with probably the most infamous character development in the history of Street Fighter. Some of you don't know who this is yet, and some of you are already getting upset about it. This is King Cobra. He was created because during the development of Street Fighter 4, Capcom wanted to appeal to overseas audiences, so they wanted to create characters they thought American audiences would like. This led to the development of Sea Viper and King Cobra. Makes me wonder if that's why they both have snake-themed names. Maybe Capcom decided to give them a similar naming theme because they were both created for the same purpose. Who can say? Now, King Cobra was going to be an acrobatic rival to Ken and Ryu, practicing his own form of martial arts known as Break Kung Fu, a mix between Kung Fu and Break Dancing. He was designed by legendary Capcom artist Daigo Ikino, and they hired Wataru Hatano to voice him. But halfway through recording the character's lines, I repeat that, they hired the voice actor for him and got halfway through recording the character. Street Fighter 4's art director, Takashi Kami, said, Hey, what if he was overweight? And Ikino agreed with this, so they started reworking his design. And reworking it. And reworking it. Until we wound up with the brand new King Cobra. <laughs> That's right, this guy was turned into this guy. And I make it sound like it was a very slow change, but Daigo Aquino himself would later admit they rushed Rufus's design, which is further backed up by the fact that Wataru Hatano said that when he saw Rufus, he was genuinely shocked and actually said, quote, wait, is that my character? Remember, he had already recorded half of the character's lines before they changed everything on him. It makes it sound almost like all these changes happened overnight. Imagine that. Imagine you spend the whole day recording your lines for this character. Then you break for the day, go home, rest up, come back in the morning, and the director says, okay, ready to get back to work recording for your character? And then this guy pops up on the screen. The game's director, Yoshinori Ono, would later comment on the less than positive initial response to Rufus's design, saying that Street Fighter is known for more over-the-top characters, and they wanted something that would, quote, freak people out, and would get people talking, which, okay, mission accomplished, I guess. In all seriousness, I do know that there are people out there who are fans of Rufus, but I can also tell you there are plenty of people out there that wish we would have gotten King Cobra instead.
But that brings us to the latest Street Fighter, Street Fighter V. And lucky for us, the development team at Capcom has actually been very upfront with character development for this game, sharing multiple cut characters and early character designs on their website. Which means that we don't have to piece anything together on this one and scrounge around for blurry secret photos. No, we actually have a very good look at the cut cast of characters for this game, and boy were there a lot of them. First up, we have a character referred to as Fighting Literary Master. A man who fights mostly with his brains instead of his brawn, he would constantly stop to mumble to himself and would be lost in thought. Makes me wonder if this could possibly have been tied to his V-Trigger or V-Skill, like you activate and he just starts mumbling and that gives him some kind of a buff. Here's one that goes way back into Street Fighter V's development. There was going to be at one point a Shadow Soldier who looked like this in the game. Not sure if they were going to be playable or if they were intended to be some random grunt that you would find in the story mode. The game's director, Takayuki Nakayama, said the design was inspired by Alien vs. Predator. Not sure if he means the movie or the old Capcom beat-em-up, but either way, I can totally see it. Now, the reason why this one interests me so much is because, if you'll notice, this guy gets his own fully fleshed-out design that looks like it was Ray for production. And he has a much darker and more cybernetic look to him compared to the other characters in this game. Well, when Street Fighter V was in early development, originally it was going to have a darker tone and graphics that were supposed to be far more realistic. We've even seen some early concept art of M. Bison and what he was supposed to look like, and he's rocking a cybernetic body that seems to match up with how this Shadowloo soldier is designed, which makes me think that this design was from way back in the original build of Street Fighter V. Next up, someone on this team was really pushing for a sports theme fighter because at one point this game was going to feature a Brazilian soccer player and he was rejected simply because he felt too similar to Roberto from Rival Schools. Well, if that was your problem, then maybe you could have just put Roberto from Rival Schools in the game, Capcom! Just throwing that out there. But when that was scratched, they were going to put in here an American football player. She'd be a scandally clad girl who would use powerful tackle moves. This idea did end up getting scrapped, however, they would take the idea of a football fighter and throw it into an obscure corner of the Street Fighter lore, as this concept art would be the inspiration for one of Armika's teammates. Yes, for anyone who doesn't know, Armika belongs to a wrestling league full of colorful charismatic characters who have actually appeared in the Street Fighter comics, and according to Capcom, those comics actually are canon and all of those characters do exist within the Street Fighter world. And this football player would go on to inspire one of these wrestlers, Maple Storm, a Canadian wrestler who used to be a football player and now fights people by throwing poutine in their face. I'm not making that up. Well, speaking of Canadian sports themes fighters, our next cut character would simply be referred to as Puck Bunny. She would be a redhead tomboy Canadian hockey player who would focus heavily on defense, but she was cut because they felt her design was too basic. And the Canadian disrespect train doesn't stop there, because after that, they pitched another Canadian representative, Snowman. He would be a big, strong beast with some of the highest attack power in the game, but he was cut because they felt he was, quote, two Darkstalkers for this game. So yeah, two scrap Canadian characters in a row, but don't worry, Canadian fans, they did give you Abigail. <laughs> I'm sorry, my northern neighbors, you didn't deserve that. But what's wild is that actual Bigfoot wasn't even the weirdest cut character from this game. Allow me to present to you a character simply known as Lobster Hand. He's called that because he has giant red hands that he uses to fight. Are they cybernetic? No, that would make sense. And remember, this is Street Fighter, the fighting game full of weirdos. Those were apparently his actual hands, and he had worked them so hard that he now had big red calluses all over them that he used as armor. You know what? Uh, I'm actually cool with this one getting cut. I don't really think the man with the most powerful scabs in the world would have caught on with audiences. Next up, one of the more interesting cut characters. This fighter was simply referred to as Clumsy Cutie. She fights with tools, which makes me think that she was meant to be some kind of a mechanic. But her big gimmick is that she would be incredibly clumsy, and that clumsiness would play into her combat. Which could be a fun mechanic, kind of like a drunken boxer style of fighting where they're just stumbling around and just falling into the opponent and hitting them. But here's the thing. Notice all those patches on her clothes? Well, apparently, as the fight went on, her clothes would continue to get ripped as a result of her clumsiness, 
leaving her more and more exposed as the fight went on. Street Fighter V really was trying to be the horniest Street Fighter of all time, wasn't it? Well, let's move on to some more finalized designs. These next two are some of my personal favorites. You know Gen, a deadly assassin who's been in this game since the start? We even referenced him earlier when talking about Chun-Li's early designs. Well, at two different points during the game's development, the Street Fighter team pitched including his disciples in the game. One of them was going to be a tall girl who Gen treated like a granddaughter, and her design included elements that the art team claimed would go on to inspire Seth's finalized design. And the other design was going to be a young, scarred-up man who originally was going to appear in the game to fight Nikali, and then would go on to fight Akuma because Akuma was one of Gin's rivals. But Gin had fallen ill due to disease, so his disciple was going to have to fight him in his stead. By the way, fun fact, in the article where they talk about this character, Nakayama says, Don't worry, because this character didn't make the cut, that means Gin is still alive and well. Uh... Nakayama, did you happen to watch Akuma's story in this game? Accept your fate and go to hell! The sun! Yeah, he's... You know what, I'm sure he's fine, he'll walk that off. Next up, two fighters who got so close to making it into the game that they even got official artwork. There's Asuka, an Aikido fighter who uses their opponent's strength against them. She was cut because the developers felt they had too many Japanese fighters in the game already, but Nakayama has said that he would like to bring her back in a later game. And considering that he's working on Street Fighter VI, that could happen. And then there's Elizabeth, a French savat fighter decked out in armor. She was also going to be a wealthy art dealer, which is why she ended up getting cut. They felt they had too many rich people on the cast. Which, when you put it like that, I now actually kind of want to see a return. You can make her like the socialite stuck-up rival to Karin. Alright, those are all the scrapped original characters, but before we go, let's take a look at a few of the early designs for the characters who did make it into the game. First up, remember Nikali? The big new threat of the game? Until they just got rid of him without him amounting to anything? Well, originally, he was going to be far more human, looking like a ninja. But this design was scrapped because they wanted Nikali to be more wild and mystic. Next up, this is an interesting one. In both Street Fighter V and Street Fighter IV, the team proposed the idea of having a fighting president. But that idea was scrapped for both games. For a time, that is. I love this one because Nakayama talked about this scrapped idea of a fighting president in an article from June of 2016. Guess what got revealed two years later in August of 2018? I'll fight this battle. Why? Because it is my duty. Yep, apparently the idea for G had been around for two generations before finally making it in. Capcom kept looking at this design and just saying, I don't know, just something doesn't feel right about it. <gasps> it's perfect. And speaking of ideas that the Street Fighter team were trying to push for a while, after Sagat left Bison's team and went on a quest for redemption, the Street Fighter developers figured that they should probably give Bison a new henchman. I mean, Bison's team is called the Four Heavenly Kings, it doesn't exactly work when there's only three of them. So they ended up creating Fong, a character whose appeal in the Street Fighter community is... up for debate. But there were multiple other characters who they went through before settling on the Poison Birdman, and shockingly enough, some of them are even weirder than Fong. Okay, here goes. Time for the lightning round. First up, an Indian pop star who fought by dancing. I'm actually down with this idea. I think he'd make for a cool fighter, but not as one of Bison's generals. Dancing superstar doesn't sound evil enough for Shadowloo. Then there's a small girl who would be super strong and would pick the opponent up and smack them around. I'm also cool with this character. I think she looks all right. I think she'd make a fun addition to Street Fighter, but once again, she just doesn't scream super villain to me. This does not feel like someone who should be working under Bison. Then there's a Malaysian woman who would be huge, covered in scars and muscle, fought rhinos and tigers to train, and was decked out in military camo. This one is perfect if you ask me. Cool design, looks intimidating, and I could easily buy someone who dresses like this working for Bison totally would have taken her as a brand new addition to Shadowloo. But now we start getting a little more out there. We've got a giant ape man who was transformed into a gorilla through a science experiment, and now he carries his blind daughter on his shoulders. This one actually would live on in one way or another, as when Ed reforms Shadowloo in his story mode ending, 
we do see a giant gorilla is in his ranks. Then there's a Pacific Island woman who's designed to be a little bit chubby, but when she activates her V-trigger, it would cause her to become thin. Also, going off this artwork, I'd say she probably uses fire attacks, but I'm totally just guessing on that one. And lastly, they pitched not just replacing Sagat, but replacing all of Bison's subordinates to create three brand new characters, all themed around Say No Evil, Speak No Evil, and Hear No Evil. The Say No Evil would be a man with a mask over his mouth who would simply convey everything through an intimidating stare. Okay, that one's not that weird. Then the Hear No Evil would be a teenage robot who had antennas for ears and speakers on her hips. Okay, that one's pretty weird. And lastly, and I swear to you, this is true, See No Evil would be a man who had caught the attention of a female monkey and the monkey had fallen in love with him and was now constantly hugging his face. And the way he would fight would be by trying to pull the monkey off of him, making him something of a drunken boxer style fighter. You know what, Fong? Uh, perhaps I judged you too harshly. You... You just keep doing your thing, Fong. We're all good now. But now we come to the final character we're going to talk about today, and this one... Oh boy, what a character to go out on because this is the only character who can possibly outdo Rufus in terms of how much they changed during development. Not just because of how different their initial design was, but also because of how many designs they went through. I'm talking about Minot. Yes, Minot is an incredibly popular new addition to Street Fighter, but who knows what could have happened if they had gone with an earlier design. Minot underwent so many different designs, you could make an entire fighting game just out of these scrap concepts. You could make your own Into the Minotverse out of these. Her layer designs are a bit different, but they still resemble the free-spirited gymnastic fortune teller that we all know. But you start going back further, and things begin to get a little different. This one was still a protege of Rose, although now she was going by the name Clematis, which is another type of flower. And rather than fighting with a crystal ball, she would fight with a silk scarf that she was in control of. Half of her body would be covered in gold dust, which might have been a reference to her design before this, because before we got Silk Scarf Minot, we had a version who would also be covered in gold dust, but she would be able to mentally control that dust and shape it into letters and animals that she would attack with. Then you've got a version who fights with incense and a giant water pipe, She's apparently dying, so she has to fight to find some kind of a rejuvenating concoction that could save her life. And the incense idea would pop up in another design, a shopkeeper with the power to turn herself into smoke. We then have a few other Egyptian designs, but you go back even further and you'll see that originally she wasn't from Egypt at all. Before that, she was going to be a magician with two different designs. One that looks like a fighting game version of Trucy Wright, who uses soul power to summon up birds and small animals from her hat then a darker, edgier version that turned playing cards into weapons. This version was actually going to be a villain who was trying to kill her master. A master who was a fortune teller. Meaning it might still have been Rose all the way back at this early stage of development. I gotta say, I really enjoyed this concept because I love that Minot is the student of Rose. I always love that idea of the next generation of characters who are trained by the previous generation, so Minot and Rose's relationship is great. But I gotta say, I also kind of find the idea of Rose training a student who turns evil to be kind of cool too. I'd actually like to see this character revived at some point. But now we go far enough back to get to the really weird takes. The takes where you can't recognize even a drop of Minot DNA in these characters. The early take of Minot wasn't even called Minot. Her early name was Rita, and she was going to be a delinquent punk from Italy who was obsessed with manga and anime. So much so that she had a thing for Goku. I'm not kidding, for legal reasons they couldn't actually say that, but in the article Nakayama says, quote, her first crush was on a certain spiky haired Super Saiyan something or other. He went on to say that she also loves to cosplay but keeps it a secret and would quote, commit harakiri if any of her friends found out. Now this design does seem completely different from Minot, but there is one very loose thread that does tie her to the finalized design, as this character would eventually learn that she has soul power, which is the type of power that Rose uses, meaning she could have still ended up becoming Rose's apprentice. Although I imagine their relationship would have been very different. But that's not even the weirdest design, as we now come to the very first design for this character, who was simply known 
as Pizza Assassin. This would have been a waitress at a pizza restaurant who spoke softly and acted all cute and innocent, but would then turn serious and go in for the kill, using a pizza cutter as her primary weapon. Nagayama says that they were going for someone like B.B. Hood with this design, a sweet innocent girl on the outside who was cold blooded on the inside. Also, it says that she would have been working as an assassin to help support her family of 33 people. Holy cow. And this is all just pure speculation on my part, but it's easy to think that she might still be Italian, seeing as how pizza is an Italian dish. But looking at all the green that she's wearing and the red hair, I don't know, I'm getting Irish vibes when I look at this character. Also, for some reason, I now want to eat a square hamburger. So, from pizza serving assassin, to Italian punk with a Goku body pillow, to evil stage magician, to a cat themed sand summoner, Minot has gone on a huge journey until she eventually found her way to being the quirky fortune teller we all know today. And that is why I love looking at these early designs and cut characters. I love seeing just how much these characters changed. What interesting designs never got used? What characters could have existed or seen where some of our favorites got their start? I just find it interesting. I hope that you do too. Who knows which of these characters might return one day? Which one could end up going on to influence a future fighter? Or heck, which one might slip through some weird legal black hole and end up becoming a new fan-made icon? Let me know what you think down below. Which of these designs really piqued your interest? Which one would you love to see come back in some way, shape, or form? Let me know all that and more down below. And you can always find me around the web on Twitter at Thorgy's Arcade, on Twitch at Professor Thorgy. And if you want to support this video, then make sure that you share it around the web. That really is one of the best ways to help this channel grow. But you can also just leave a thumb up, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button. Those are all ways to let YouTube know to share these videos around. And if you want to go one step further and vote on some upcoming videos and get some early sneak peeks, then you can head over to our Patreon by following the link in the description down below. Thanks for tuning in today, everyone. Stay safe out there and come back next time.